This is the card game that's sweeping across the world. Texas Hold'em just keeps getting bigger and tonight we have another six players looking for a piece of a half a million dollar prize pool. This is serious money and with some of the best players in the world taking part, it's the tournament you want to be watching. And with Jesse May and cowboy Kenna James commentating on the action, it's the one you want to hear too. Let's go over to the guys now. Good evening, ready to tie one on. Jesse May here with the cowboy Kenna James. Great to be here, Jesse. Always a pleasure to take in the action here at the Party Poker World Open. Back to the tables in a second for this heat of the uh, World Open. And a uh, couple semifinal seats filled. I believe we've got big action tonight, at least in the mouth department. Well, absolutely. A lot of characters out there tonight. It should be interesting, certainly a lot of fun. But who will rise to the occasion and take that semifinal seat? Fill the slots, fill the chairs. Let's see who's playing in the lineup. My name is Lawrence Bonet. I go by Larry. I'm from Sarasota, Florida. Unfortunately, after college, I played no more poker until just about a year ago. This is, I'm sure, by far the biggest tournament I've played in. I'm anxious to play in this. I'm excited to be here. My name's Howard Plant, I'm from uh, Blackpool, which is uh, northwest. Uh, I've been playing poker for 15 years to 20 years, you know, as a happy times. A lot of poker players know me already. Uh, it might go a little bit better towards the Bentley, um, you know, paying for the Bentley if I win it, but uh, apart from that, you know, I just want to play. I'm Mark Heron, I'm 25 and I'm from Dorchester. I've been playing poker for about three years, uh, full time for about 18 months. You can expect me to be going all out to get through to the semi-final. I'm Jeff, I'm from the United States. I, uh, I live in Washington, D.C. Uh, I've been playing poker about a little over two years. Um, recently it's gotten pretty out of control. The last six months of my life have been tumultuous because of poker. Uh, before I was just a consultant sitting behind a desk um, and then my brother and I got into playing five dollar sink goes about two years ago and then uh, like I said the last six months has really exploded. Hi my name is Luke Patton, I'm 35, I come from Nayland in Suffolk. I've been playing Holden for about a year, I've had quite a lot of success on the ranking event circuit, um, I've won four events in the last year and uh, things have been going quite well. I don't really have many qualities as a poker player, I'm a bit like a Labrador, I just keep going for every single pot. Um, I need to tone it down a bit. I seem to have one gear and um, it's a quick one. My name's Kevin O'Connell. I'm 21 years of age. I look a bit older than that, but it's a rough life. I've been playing poker in a previous life for about 30 years. I learned to play in Las Vegas back in the 70s. I used to be a bit of a, a mug playing blackjack. I've I've played quite a few TV events and I've never won one. I keep coming second and second. I'm not, not like a bridesmaid, not a bride. So to win this would be, make me into a bride. It made me quite happy. Fast or slow, it'll be colorful for sure. And Kenna, you've played before with Howard Plant, haven't you? Yeah, I've played with Howard Plant down under in Australia. Always a colorful personality at the table. Usually wears, uh, you know, some goofy hats. He, he likes to uh, have fun and enjoy the game as I do. So he'll be interesting to watch. Kevin O'Connell, bit of a poker legend for UK television. He's played in televised events for over six years and uh, could be ready to make that big score. Right, and Lawrence Bonet, you know, the experienced uh, older statesman at the table. If the cards fall his way, who knows, he, he may be the one to take home the prize. Not to mention Luke Patton, an online qualifier, but ranked second in Europe, virtue of big scores. So let's get over to the table and see who's ready to take these reins in hand. Send the children inside and open your ears. We've got a chatterbox table here at the World Open, ready to get rolling. 600,000 in chips on the table, split up 100,000 a piece. The yellow chips, as usual, worth 1,000 a piece. The blues are two. The red's worth 5,000, and you must get every chip on the table to advance. One of these six going forward to the semifinal. And Kenna James, our job made easy tonight. These guys are going to provide all the narration. 
<laughs> it certainly is. A lot of humor out there, a lot of laughs, a lot of fun, but only one golden ticket, as you said, into the semifinals, where the winner of that will go to the finals in a chance to win $200,000. Early action, Mark Heron, Pocket Queens. Yeah, how about this, Mark? Mark very well known in the UK scene online, and the two queens right away running into Luke Patton's big slick. This could be, knowing how these guys play, I was gonna say all in before the flop, but Patton choosing to cold call the 10. And uh, this will be a big pot right away. 10,000, uh, would you consider that a large Pass. opening bet five times Pass. big blind? Yes, it's, <laughs> you know, it's it's a little bit above standard, but right in the right in the ballpark, 10% of the stack. Remember, each player starting with 100,000 in chips. An anxious flop, the first hand off the deck. Well, Luke Patton has already saved himself some money, it yeah. looks like. He has missed a flop and will. He continue on in this hand. He doesn't have much information about what Marky Mark has, does he? Pass. No, he doesn't. Looks like his uh, strategy was to try and flop a pair. Uh, and also not uh, get out of line early and not jeopardize a lot of extra chips. It was a very effective strategy there. Only losing 10,000 with that ace king could have uh, done a lot more damage than that. One hand, one victory for Mark Heron from Dorchester. Cards coming out. Jeff Schriebman from Arlington, Virginia in the sunglasses there. Pass. 2,000 a call. Pass. And the round of Kevin O'Connell, who is a poker legend in the UK. Pass. From round Cole. about the Midlands uh, area. Howard Plant just completing mm -hmm. the bet of the big blind. He has queen 10. Mark Heron stares down at jack three of clubs. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know. They, they wait. Option, they and we will see a flop. Four thousand mm -hmm. in the pot. Top pair for Howard Plant. Okay. Check. Okay. Howard is one check. of those Fair very check. tricky players, Kenna, and uh, he's one of those reverse players. If he checks, he might have it. Plays the opposite to his hand Pass. strength. And Checks when he has something and bets when he doesn't, says Jesse May. <laughs> Hand two in the books. Doesn't steal, but he does check race. Well known for his colorful <laughs> shirts. He has not disappointed tonight. <laughs> we could be here for five hours, you know that, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, Except for Kevin, you could be here all night. <laughs> By the way, the they might close the bar. Uh, Yeah, you Pass. know, just the look at the table, you can see as we look at Kevin O'Connell briefly considering the nine deuce. Pass. People's Pass. dress attire <coughs> quite different. Pass. Cool. Pass. Pass. A very small raise, I be believe, from Howard Plant and uh, Shreedman. We're head up here, Howard Plant and Shreedman. I think Shreedman's in the big blind, and Plant Check. on the button with uh, does he have a straight draw here, Kenna? Ten would hit him nicely. That six, though, has hit Shreedman's hand. And, uh... 5,000. It's going to be a little bit tough for this young Check American marks. from Arlington, Virginia. He's, um... Pass found himself in the middle of a table full of Missy. insane Brits, as you say. He's going to want to be careful here, isn't he? <laughs> yes, it will it's good it. job, isn't it? Bide his time and wait for a better situation. <laughs> Good-looking young man. Oh, a good-looking table, a mix of everybody from the flowered yellows to the business here. suit Sometimes the to the pink golf shirt and the Vegas-style oh. shirt there of Kevin O'Connell. He looks down at ace nine of diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> that looks playable. Again. Hi, Race. Race to 6,000 total. Triple the bet. Kevin's Pass. had uh, 
Fast. Several big final table finishes Fast. in Europe, but still lacking that major cool. title and uh, like wouldn't be well, one of the rules in the start England. here. This pot's three way now. Luke Patton's got a hand. Come. Just in case you, 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 mm. might not be, you might not have been you know, familiar with that rule. You mean <laughs> if they read your book, Kevin, the last three pages are missing? <laughs> <laughs> They've basically Ten. all missed here. How is a... Uh, oh, oh here comes Patton firing. What's that about? Oh, he's going to put a he's going to put a pickup bet out there. And uh, that's a type of a bet, a feeler bet, which says if nobody has anything, maybe they'll just go away and uh, he'll take what's out there. If nobody wants to fight, everybody acting very friendly at the table in the early going. And he's maybe looking to take advantage of that. Look at the instincts though of Kevin O'Connell not wanting this to give up on this pot. Ninety-second rule. Kevin is so slow that he once got mugged by a tortoise and a snail. And when the police asked him what happened, he said, I don't know, it all happened so fast. No, I had the best Patton, time. Uh, of course, has a regular man's day job, but he loves his poker and has Pass. made something like 16 Italy, final seven. tables this year alone Pass. in Europe. He's, uh, wow. he's well regarded for the amount of time he plays, but um, the times that he hasn't made a final table, mm -hmm. he's you know, usually been first or second <laughs> out. <laughs> and that includes multi-table <laughs> tournaments. So it's <laughs> feast <laughs> or <laughs> famine for Luke Patton. My style of play is normally quite aggressive. Um, I think it probably suits it towards the end of the tournament or the end of a table, but it's terrible at the start. So I need to almost go missing for the first two or three levels, but I can never ever manage it. Show me 7-2 off suit and I'm straight for it. Welcome back to the PartyPoker.net World Open. In our heat tonight, only the table winner will go through into the semi-finals. The rest go home empty-handed. With a half a million dollar prize pool, no one will be giving this up lightly. Let's head back to the table. I like to play this game in, uh, at the Frontier on the Strip, back in when I was about three years old. Exactly the first and, place uh, I ever played Texas Hold'em. He, he the never, old frontier. He never moved up in, up in the scales at all. He, 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 he never thought he, about taking it up professionally. Oh, no, no, no. Blind still one in 2,000. First level here. Pass. Kevin O'Connell giving a, Pass. It's a history poker, lesson. poker history lesson here. <laughs> Seven to play. Okay. And, uh, this is about the fifth Best hand Jeff Schreiber okay, has played, up, yeah. but it's the first real okay, hand he's picked up, and there's a... Bitch, yeah, you, you bitch stands. He can it, still there's a problem that's happened here, Kevin James, which ask. is that Luke Patton <laughs> was raised out of turn, and mm -hmm. Schreibman, okay, uh, with the two tens, could have just called no, there and re-raised, because Patton's bet has stand to stand. Okay. Yes. I'll go back Accepted. to you, Kev. If you had a flat call... But then he could have re-raised at me, yeah. No, you could have re-raised. If you flat call, he's automatically As they work the confusion out. Uh, look at this, Kevin O'Connell's got ace-queen. This is really yeah. tricky. I think O'Connell's going to re-raise here, not realizing that Shreedman's the one with the big hand. This, this could get very itchy. Well, it's already mass confusion down on the felt as they sort this out. Kevin O'Connell will decide what he wants to do. Now, what's happened is that... Luke Patton no, has made it 7,000 out of turn okay. for the small blind. Shreedman, who could have decided to limp in and call, has made the 7,000 bet himself. Cool. And uh, O'Connell has done well, very well just to good. call here with the ace queen. It would have been a real mess if he had re raised. Okay. Well, it might have uh, gone a long way in clearing this up if everyone had folded, but now we've got an action flop. Queen 10, deuce, top okay. fair O'Connell, a set for Schreibman. Um, How will this play out? I expect to see some fireworks here. O'Connell definitely in trouble. It's gonna be tough for him to get away 11, from this. 11,000. As he bets out 11,000. You know, I think the only question here, Ken, isn't it? Is, this, is Schreibman gonna break O'Connell or just take a little lot of it? Well, see, this is a mistake. A lot of times that an amateur makes is that they'll flat call with the set with the flush draw out there. If he re-raises here, he might get additional action, big action from O'Connell. Yeah, a raise here could get all the chips in on the flop. 
a flat call could slow the action down. Is that what you're saying? It, uh, exactly. It slows more. the action down. And he does make Nothing the raise. Not only does he make it, it, it's a big one. That's right. This is what right. you want to do with a set. You want to get the money in totally. as quickly as possible and put your opponent at a decision for all his chips. Because if he had flat called and a spade came off, it would kill the action. Instead, he drives the action, and let's see what happens. Action to O'Connor. Kings? This is really deceiving. No, because if I had Kings, I would have re-raised him. I'm sliding it, too. That huge bet, does it look almost weak? Although O'Connell's saying, do you have Kings? Well, he thinks he would have re-raised with Kings. That's a thought you know, process going through more? his mind. 30,000 more. He can't get away from this. Very tough decision. Kevin O'Connell under the gun. What will he do? Can you raise this? What is Kevin thinking? Is he's got the ace of spades as well, Kenna, which isn't a bad back. <sighs> Backdoor flush and straight draws along with top pair, top kicker. But you can see that he senses he's behind. Very tough decision for Kevin O'Connell. I feel for him. Also, with a possible flush draw out there, this is this would be a remarkable lay down if he could get away from this hand. I can't even imagine he's thinking about it, but he seems to Gotta be have talking to watch this on TV. into himself. What a fold! Well, I told you, Jesse May, this looks like the player at the table, and true to his look, inside the book, the heart and the knowledge of a professional poker player. Great lay down, Kevin O'Connell. Okay. And Schriebman played that pot in such a way that 99% of the time he would have gotten paid in spades. As it is, zero action. He must be gutting himself. Well, not not exactly. You you know, you take what the game gives. You can't be disappointed. You play your hand correctly, and whatever comes, comes. And whatever doesn't, you don't regret. I've never seen anything like that. Howard Plant grabbing all his chips and pulling them backwards. Howard, the, the pot is towards the center. Now he's having a little bit of a directional mishap here. Would you do me a favor? <coughs> These are my chips. If I go anywhere, would you watch him, please? Please, sir. Would you, do me a, would you watch him for me? Who's watching him? The comedy relief Race. at the table, Howard Plant. Oh, he's usually Race wears colorful hats. Take it away, Jesse. Looks like Mark Heron. Pass. Here is picked Pass. up pocket rockets. I mean, this game barely a few minutes old, and we've seen some big hands out there. Mark Heron with his second big pair of the evening. Pocket Pass. rockets raised to 7,000. Re Raise. Oh, my yeah. lord. It is what we call a cooler deck. This is a cooler deck. It's where, you know, all the chips are going to be going in here before the flop. You'd swear you were in Moscow. Aces out against the Kings. And poor Lawrence Bonet, who has traveled here from the panhandle of Florida, is going to be out with a coffee cup himself. Busking for cash when this one's through. 30,000 total. Unless he can discover a king. He's raised it to 30,000. Now, will Heron Flat call or move? get all the chips in right here? That's the only question. Lawrence Bonet, who uh, has uh, done nothing wrong so far except draw the one seat. And uh, gentlemen. you don't see this too often at a six-handed table, Kenna, but when you do, it's, uh, it's ugly. It's like drawing the short straw when you have to go into the lion's den and Eight feed him his Eight dinner. Total. No, you, you've played a couple of these, Kenna. Is there any way to get away from pocket kings before the flop at a six-handed table? Well, I've done it only once in my career, and it depends if you have a tremendous amount of room where both players have a lot of chips and there's a bet, a raise, a re-raise, and then a re-raise. Sometimes you can figure it out. But in this situation where... Uh, I'm all in. All in. You know, the, it, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. much dictated. And a call. Yeah, was, th was there also a shotgun to your head? <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence Bonet all in here, and 
in real desperate straits. Aces versus kings. Why is Heron delaying and turning his hand over? Bonet has already exposed his kings. Heron should have flipped his aces over right away. A bit of a... Show me at least one king. I hope that wasn't a slow play. Two aces. Uh, you know, when well, I, I have a big aces, hand like that, and all the chips out. are already in, I just turn my hand up right away. You don't... You don't want to uh, don't need needle your opponent at all and let him think he's got the best hand when, in fact, he doesn't. At least I'm not a proponent of that. Oh, wow! Oh. And you might pay the penalty, my friend, as a king comes off and materializes on the flop. Heron has gone from happy to hellhole, and uh, there's real trouble for him, Kenna, as well, because we saw... Howard Plant fold an ace early up. Oh, now just a second, Jesse May. That three mm -hmm. brings in the wheel mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. for Heron. Now a four Five will ounce. give him the wheel, the straight, or an ace, a higher trips. He's got a 14% chance to catch it on the river. It's no fun running kings into aces. Even worse, getting the aces cracked. Has it happened? It has, like a raw egg. Heron has been knuckled open by the Cowboys. And Bonet has gone from having a bad day to raking a pile you can't jump over. Wow. And Heron, the lightning bolt on his arm, if we can pan over to see it, he has been struck by lightning. A lightning bolt named Bonet, Lawrence Bonet. There it is. Whatever that is, lightning bolt, a sword. It's too late, the cards have gone out, love. Pierce the heart. Yeah, not a happy man. I'm not caring. That Sometimes. You can see he looks like a man who has drawn the wrong end of the stick. Well, Heron not out that hand. He had 7,000 left, but he's quickly put them back into action, and I don't believe he cares what he has. Luke Patton says, I'm willing to be your executioner. Flat calling with the Queen Jack. Well, I think executioner is the wrong word there, Jesse May. It's more like the mop-up artist. The guy that cleans up after the executioner, Lawrence Bonet, good luck. Thank you. Cool. did his duty. Side, yeah, bring over the blood. I bin. said good luck. Whoops. Heron <laughs> does have an ace, and it's leading at this stage, but he'll have to beat two to triple I'll up. Blind. Well, I tell you, needles a bind here. Howard Plant wishing okay, him two. luck two after seven. losing that major pot. Ten thousand. Was better than money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Luke Patton, I guess betting for what he feels is value right here, but interestingly oh, enough, pass. Kenna, pass. they've both that's got right. a straight draw, a and if an eight uh, had come, Howard Plant and Luke Patton both making a straight, Luke Patton's oh, higher, yeah, well, Patton wouldn't have minded giving the free card there. Yeah. In that situation, uh, he could have won Howard's mm -hmm. whole stack. Yeah, that's just back. And if the eight does pop right now, uh, Patton will win a very small pot. So it's going to be a big nice. one. Well, Heron in the lead. He needs yeah, to avoid an eight king, and, uh, seven jack, jack or, seven or, queen. or queen. A lot of cards, a, a bevy of outs for Luke Patton to eliminate Mark Heron. Will he do it? Yeah, good call. Eight through king, the eliminators. It's a oh. harmless deuce. For Thank Heron, who <laughs> staves <laughs> off <laughs> the execution, so to speak. <laughs> you can. Doubles up his small stack. <laughs> yeah, tripled up. He's been tripled from 7,000 to 22, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> still in this first level, <laughs> can, uh, you can nearly make an argument it's playable. Well, he has no choice, uh, Jesse. <laughs> and the only way to go is up. Looking at the leaderboard, a nice balance of hands won but no justice in the chips. Bonet doubling up at the expense of Mark Heron, and that's been most of the movement. It'll be Lawrence Bonet under the gun here. And he's looking once, looking Pass. twice. I'll race. Finding race. nothing nice. 
Howard Plant has sat tight for about two okay, rounds at a table, and he can stand it no more. Pass, pass. Now, he'll enter the fray pass. of action with the ace five. Called by Kevin O'Connell with the king seven of hearts. This is I what I was fearing that, uh, you know, he may uh, want to get in the action a little bit too soon after losing that big pot. Check. Really being liberal with the chips, calling a raise with Six the king thousand. seven of hearts. Yes, sir. Yes. Six thousand. I said, you have any of that? Mm. Yeah, you can't have any of that. So what did you raise with? You can tell me it's allowed. Honestly, you, you won't get shouted at. He never passed them back. These two know each other pretty well. I have a pair of those, you know. There's one road from Burnley to Blackpool I think that's I littered. Know with a lot of corpses. <laughs> so some of them were put there <coughs> out of light. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> Howard showing the ace there. He's in uh, third place now. Probably feeling like everything's going according to his plan. It's always nice to get that uh, first one under your belt. You have to pay to see two, game. don't they? You have to pay to see two. Did I show you one? Didn't mean to. Didn't know. What was it? I bet these guys saw it. Howard what was Plant it? there. He's a very powerful man. Did you guys man. see, did you see it, Luke? Once saw him deadlift Howard Letterer over his to. head. And that was before <laughs> Howard had the surgery. Wow. A few years ago. Wow. Yeah. Isle of Man, Cold. and uh, that takes some muscle. <laughs> tell you what. That takes some muscle. He's exacting muscle here. He it brings it amazing. in uh, <laughs> with pocket sevens. It uh, looks like Kevin O'Connell is ready for business. I think he's just flat called it's here. 11,000 total now. Or is it a minimum re-raise? Well, Howard Plant may have limped in here with Pass. a two sevens, and from the small blind, O'Connell just slipped it up gently. Seven. Can, uh, a bit of a backwards uh, right. action. Well, that's exactly right. Plant okay. is limped oh, with that. properly with the two sevens. He's out oh. of position. Early oh, Lord, position. No, raised by O'Connell with the ace jack, the making 11,000 to go. Seven more thousand for Plant. So he's got plenty of sevens. Does he have one on the flop? Nada. Queen, queen, deuce. Check. That flop looks a lot nicer Check. to Howard than Check. it does to Kevin. Well, this is the problem. When you re-raise out of the small blind, you're out of position for the rest 7, of the hand. 000. And it's difficult. Cool. Really, uh, O'Connell trying to push this hand through. He'll need an ace or jack, and he hasn't got it. That's not a very good card for him because it makes it look like mm, that his ace is yeah, good. Come in. <laughs> Sure yeah, does. I think the bet's only about 9,000. Right. I, I'm sure Howard's going to oh, call this. 9,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, nice call by Howard Plant. Nice on that one. He'll plant those chips right into his stack. Second consecutive mm -hmm. pot won by Howard Plant. He's now in second place. That vaults him up to 135,000 and in a comfortable yeah, position is yeah, Howard Plant. He played that hand with a pillow, didn't he? He just kind of received everything if Kevin O'Connell had to I throw at him without race. dishing it back. Is that a good way to play a hand sometimes, out. Kenna? Sometimes, you know, especially in the early going, you show your your opponent some respect. He got re-raised. He flat called. Was, didn't, wasn't 100% sure he was where he was in the hand. And uh, I like the way he played that hand. Okay, Mark Heron now, pocket eight. Right. Trying to continue Watch on the comeback trail. Makes it 11,000 to go. He has had no shortage of playable hands, Pass. but uh, doesn't have that much to show for him. And I believe we're gonna see a all in two here. Total. I think so, it's a re-raise at the very least by O'Connell, who's also struggling. So Pass. the two people Pass. struggling for the lifeboat Heron and O'Connell will go head to head in this pot. Let's see who comes out with the oars. 
Heron is having a few thoughts about whether or not he wants to commit everything. Well, his stack isn't big enough to get away from this hand, I don't believe. I had already anticipated his chips being into the middle of the pot. Hey, diddle, diddle. Pass. Instead, the cards go to the middle. Wow. Yeah. An unexpected turn of events as far as from where I see. All of a sudden, after some early aggressive play, he has tightened up, Decided decides not to take the race, uh, Jesse May. You surprised at that? Strong stuff. I mean, it's a statement from Mark Heron that he believes he can play himself out of any spot, I guess. And uh, you got to respect the man. I guess he said, the best I can be is in a race, and I didn't pay this money to be in one. I don't know. The player's still jovial now as the blinds are still Pass. relatively small to their stack sizes. As those Pass. increase, the action, the tension will increase. To 8, total. You know, everybody's been taking their swings. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's not like there's Pass. any shyness at this table. These guys could all pull. You know, I like Howard Plant as you get a good look at him there. Not only his colorful shirt, but his colorful personality and his approach to the game. Until he goes broke. Yeah, I seriously don't think you should good get Good chatter, I Howard is. The magician, they want. call him sometimes. <laughs> Howard Plant talking about going broke. You know, we interviewed him before. He said, what is your best poker achievement? He said, still having money left. Yes. <laughs> 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 Kevin O'Connell has played very aggressively up front this evening, but now he's found a huge hand, two kings, and has just limped oh. in here. Cool. Well, that is, he's up I against mean, some dangerous cards here. 10 jack cool. by Howard Plant, queen oh, jack anyways. suited by Bonet. This is a very dangerous spot for O'Connell to be in, and now the Rockets. Wow. I was gonna say. Incredible. Kevin was not happy with the arrangements about all the limpers, but this is the one thing he doesn't want to see. Second time, bullets against the Cowboys, and Kevin has had no love from G-Love tonight. It's Pass. Cer Pass. certainly Pass. not. And while it looks Pass. commonplace that aces come against kings, Pass. I will Just tell you, my friends, cool. it yeah, rarely is. happens. Wow. This is yeah, an enigma. I've never seen aces in times. This is the Thomas. second time Thomas. Thomas. And uh, Shreveman, who has been the bogeyman for O'Connell, he ducked him once, but the second time smacked in the forehead. And uh, Kevin shaking his head. Unless the king comes, he's uh, he's a goose egg. He doesn't. Can't believe it. Really unbelievable. But you know, Shreveman uh, probably. Uh, Thank you. I know you don't really mean it, but uh, it's like we're out of here. I mean, Kevin faces an additional problem of not even having a flush to back him up. They both no. have the same suits. There's only two kings in the deck, and it has to be. Yep, the flop queen, 10, deuce. O'Connell looking for one of the last two kings on the turn of the river, or he will be sent home. Harmless eight of spades on the turn. In his eyes. <laughs> to the river the we go, Jesse May. <laughs> <laughs> Bad things can Thank happen to good people, Great and pull. Kevin O'Connell, yeah. okay. there was uh, almost like the deck had it in for him. He's out in sixth. Sometimes you have no shot. The deck just won't let you out. That certainly was the case for Kevin O'Connell tonight. The only thing you don't want to see when you've got the Cowboys is pocket rockets. Irishman Kevin O'Connell, the first man out of this heat. I played okay, you know. Uh, I don't think I, I, I don't think I did really anything wrong, and uh, I, I, I played like a, a man with a fur hat, which is a trapper, you know. I, you know, I wear perakins, and uh, you know, I make a little, you know, a flat call, and some guy raises me. I think, oh, my birthday, move all in. What do I find? Aces. What can you do? Seven aces, six kings in a railroad car. If you ever <laughs> want to feel like a little man in a big universe, Kenna, pay seven grand and get tossed out like a burnt spare rib. <laughs>
<laughs> I feel like a little man in a big universe. <laughs> I feel like Big Bird sitting next to Kermit the Frog here, I tell you, the way we're dressed tonight. But you know, it's, it's very apropos to the colorful action that's happening down at the table, along with some serious cards that are coming out of that deck. How about Kings against Pocket Aces? Not once, but twice. I mean, it's sometimes hard to separate the play uh, of who's doing good, who's doing bad, when the cards have got their own mind made up. That's but right. What have you noticed? Well, that the cards are dictating the action <laughs> and that you better have a big hand when you come to play tonight because that's how things are running. Sometimes you can go hours and not see a hand against a hand. Here, it's every other hand. It's kings against aces, ace king or ace queen against a pair. So it's uh, like we thought, nonstop action here at the World Poker Open. What have the short stacks got to do to catch up now with the early beneficiaries of Schreibman and Bonet? Well, just stay in there, be patient and disciplined, and wait for the cards to hit you. And, you know, rather go out and, and let the game come to you rather than take it to the game. Hang five, hang tight. Kites are flying out there. Welcome back to the PartyPoker.net World Open. It's the online qualifier from across the pond, Lawrence Bernay, who's out in front. Playing poker for just a year, winning his entry into this tournament is his biggest achievement, and he's showing the pros how it's done. <laughs> Blind still two and four thousand, kind of, but the early knockout plus short stack pretty much means that there's chips to go around between the top four. Well, the action already hot, fast, Pass. and furious, Pass. and nobody likes to be Pass. the first one out. So after that first one goes, tonight it was Kevin O'Connell. Sometimes the action Cole, up opens raise? up even further. Let's see if that happens. No raise. I think one thing that's definitely happened here, looking at this blind on blind, is that uh, Shreveman feeling very good, while Luke Patton there just shifting ever so slightly uncomfortably I in his seat. To, he loves to, to dominate the action. Like that Kevin certainly hasn't happened yet, drink. Kenna, has it? <laughs> no, but he's flopped a double belly buster. What we call a double belly buster. A four makes him a straight or an eight makes him a straight. And what's great about a double belly buster is if you make it, your hand remains hidden and you can extract a lot of chips from your opponent. Cool. Yeah, and uh, Luke Patton is definitely on your wavelength because he's peeling off. Oh, wow. It's and there nice. it Check. is. You can see that he's made the straight, but it's very difficult to put your opponent on 6-7. Patton slow playing to get paid. A five would be his dream card. <laughs> and that's not bad. Check. All of a sudden, nines and fives look good enough to pay off. Absolutely. 12,000, the bet by Patton. And, and easily called by Schreibman. Oh. What is that? Five's taken. Oh, he's got a straight on him. Straight. Jeez, I'm sorry. You know, Did I he not know. realize he I made the straight? <laughs> I, I think that's what definitely happened because Luke happen. Patton <laughs> is the last guy <laughs> in the world before. who would slow roll. <laughs> oh my and goodness. And he thought that he was bluffing, Howard Kenna. Lucky he turned his hand face <laughs> up and did not throw it at the mucker. He would have lost. How about that? What do you, what do you say and uh, I don't. Uh, I wonder if Jeff Schreibman. Cousins marry. Uh, I've just dealt one. Nobody it's as right. shocked as Patton I'm as you can see yeah, at that series of development. I won that hand. You mean I won? I got called and I won. I was bluffing. <laughs> he's, a, he's like a squirrel that just found a a whole bag of nuts. Yeah. Pearl ago. Like that is wow, let's re-look at this hand, Jesse May. Yeah, that is strange as a, a quail's egg there. Uh, Patton makes a straight on the turn, three, four, five, six, seven. You said that those straights are hidden, Ken. It was so hidden, he didn't see it. <laughs> and uh, straight feet in two pairs. But he takes the pot because he turned his hand over. Absolutely. When the hands are shown, the best hand will win. And this time, it was a six, seven. The hidden straight. great no. things about poker is that we've got very sharp-eyed, competent dealers here, and they were on that quickly and uh, pushed the pot the right way. Well, Howard Plant now, he's got pocket eights. 
I think he just limped in once again, just as he did with the two sevens. Similar hand, so he'll play it the same way. He got good results the last time playing the pocket pair. Let's see what develops here. Lawrence Benet has been very quiet since doubling up with the Kings against the Aces. It's a double-edged sword limping in with those kind of hands, check. is it? Can I mean you okay. can either check. you check. can either trap someone else or trap yourself? Yeah, you know, but I think his approach is that he's going to look to flop a set, and check. if he check. doesn't, no set, no bet, unless his opponent shows weakness, Six. Six like thousand. Benet does. And uh, I tell you, I like nice. how Howard Plant is dancing around here. Shows the best hand. He's doing very well to control pot size. I'm not allowed to show. Didn't want to let it get out of control. That's right. <laughs> and the man in <laughs> yellow. I just wrong with that. Luke wouldn't have seen him. <laughs> Bouncing his beat ball home. Very nice. Sorry. <laughs> you can see he's building his stack with little risk. That's a lovely name. Howard uh, actually has... I got three grand played in kids quite now, a few of honestly, these televised so events. He's got a very good yeah. record as far as getting really deep are. in them goes. Mm -hmm. And Howard Plant, you hear three grandchildren. They've got to be proud of Pass. out of Grandpa mm. out here. Did you hear me earlier on when I Pass. said that uh, my, grand my granddaughter came in and said to the wife, um, <laughs> "No, don't waste two thousand." The granddaughter know? said to the wife, don't waste 2000 You're allowed to pass. You don't have to make up a <laughs> a line. very sharp granddaughter. <laughs> anyway, my granddaughter came in and she said to my wife, she says, what do you call it when a, a boy and a girl sleep on top of each other in the same room? And she said, oh, you're, you're not, you know, you're too young to know about intercourse. I'll tell you when you're 18. She said, uh, oh. Anyway, she went out to play. She come back five minutes later. She says, Nana, you're so stupid. It's not intercourse. It's bunk beds. Name his mum's really mad with you. What was the punchline? <laughs> she get it. Uh, she get it? <laughs> Howard Plant looking for a, a laugh. Instead got silence and so he mucks his hand and says, forget it. You guys don't want to play, I'll go to the muck. Listen, all right, when, all right. when Pearl gets to 18, let your wife do it, okay? Let your wife explain. You're doing too bad, are you? I'm trying to learn. Very easy Pass. to commentate from the perch, from the bird's eye view. Much Pass. different when you're down there at the Pass. table without the information that we are privy to, okay. thanks to our yes. whole cam card cameras here. Luke Patton just folded his button. It's in the blinds now. And uh, Bonet, very eligible to get greedy with the ace-10. Benet getting the cards early, also the fortune, which translates into the mm. chips. He is our chip leader, over 200,000 now. It's only a raise of 6,000. Cool. And Howard Plant has the kind of hand and position where he's willing to see a flop. Yep. A we call eyes. them, yeah. we call a hand like that crackers, where I come from. They play well against big pairs. You can make a straight, a flush, and crack those aces or kings and win a big pot. 20. 20 now, see, here's the follow-up bet 20. by Benet that I like. He's raised before the flop. He makes a continuation bet on the flop, puts his opponent in a bad spot here, and forces him to a decision. And Bonet's hands were shaken. Well, they were shaking uh, the last hand as well. Um, but his, Kevin, I mean, his move cool is impeccable. Time. And yeah. uh, what a great bet, because if the 10 had come, Bonet mm -hmm. would have made top pair, and uh, Plant would have okay. made the straight, which would have been disastrous. Certainly would have. Nice. Bonet playing his cards very well, stacking his fortune. As we go to the leaderboard, take it away, Jesse May. Bonet putting some space between himself and the rest of the pack, up on a third of the chips in play. And uh, Mark Heron, who was looking to make a run at things, has now drifted back here. Really, really shouldn't be so happy. After 21 years of thinking I was fantastic in bed, just found out the wife's got asthma. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pause for that thought. I always have to pause for the thoughts coming from the Howard Plant. You never know I was still what's going to come out of his mouth. <laughs> 
fast. Seven deuce, but no. he was waiting yes. to try all and in. figure out a punchline. And there's been an all in here from Mark Heron, who I think was just looking for first look in here, Kenna. And he's unfortunately uh, found it at a very bad time. <laughs> He'll be looking at pocket kings no, from Shriveman. Raised who's going to what we total. call isolate cool him. Well. <laughs> well. Mark Heron may very well okay, have two kings figuring up. in his nightmares this evening. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> has been his nemesis, the kings, <laughs> sending him to what looks like an execution. He's, uh, he's in shock. <laughs> it sounded like the king was I think he said, trumbling through the studio oh my! there. Oh, oh my! A flopped yeah. flush for Herod. Yeah. Wow, uh, but now Shryman has the king of clubs, so a club on the Turner River will give him a higher flush. Just when you think you're out of the woods, you're not. you got to dodge two more cards. <laughs> Eight of clubs would make Heron a straight flush, but he'd rather see anything red. Yep, a red nine. One more you? card to dodge. <laughs> From Mark Heron, we go to the river. Oh, okay, bye. And uh, yeah. a bit of a seat swivel yeah. there for Mark Heron. Wow. It's uh, interesting. He couldn't crack the kings with the aces, but with the seven, ten of clubs, it was all over on the flop. You can never figure this game out, can you, uh, Jesse May? <laughs> Just when you think you got it figured out, it shows you a new wrinkle. Mark Heron getting creative with the 10-7 of clubs, stays in and doubles up to 38,000 now. That one in Big red splash from Heron. It's a real hand. Cool. But uh, Shreveman caught him with pocket kings before. And now with the two jacks, he says... He always seems to have a hand. Sure does. Heron now all Pass. in once again with the ace queen of spades. Only Lawrence Bonnet to take a peek at his cards. Walked into a big bear again. Yeah. Pass. Yeah. Not kings not again. The though. worst no. situation yeah, from Heron. Good. Not as yeah. bad as before. He's got a race here. Can I sure run. does. In or out. And uh, if he can win this pot, it'll be the biggest stack he's had since the very beginning. If right. he can't. He'll be on his way home. Howard Plant calling Schreibman's hand oh. before he turned it over. Ace, queen of spades. The next yeah, best thing to that. not flopping a pair, you Ace flop the flush eight, draw. Eight, a bevy of outs, a buffet of outs, as we call it. I think Heron may be the favorite at this juncture. It's close, though. Any spade, any queen, any ace. 15 <laughs> outs, even money, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Well, he's also got a backdoor straight draw, so it's even better than that. Not better now, not no more. Now, Shreveman saying, hey, I got a good chance here. You ain't taking me twice with the big crackers. Actually, he doesn't say much at all. Shreveman's stone-faced like a wall. And the deuce of diamonds knocks Mark Heron, who managed to stay around far more than his cards warranted, Ken. Take it with you, mate. It's a very brave yeah, fit. You, uh, it sure is, but like he's looking to get out of this hot box I mean, as quick way. as possible. Mark Heron gave it a good bash, but no luck with the cards tonight. He becomes our second player out, and we're down to four. Welcome back to the PartyPoker.net World Open. It's all getting serious as we're down to four and remember it's only the winner that will go through to one of the semi-final tables and have a shot at that $200,000 top prize. Pass. <laughs> 
Nobody having a hand. It's folded around to Jeff Schreibman on the button. I feel like this is actually in the small blind. And he has the Rockets wow. now. I was going to say, I feel like this is the oh. most explosive matchup at the table. Schreibman and Patton. There's potential here for... Well, uh, there's a potential for Schreeman to go broke, slow playing the two aces. How about this? He flops quads! Yeah, I think Schreeman can afford to check several times to allow Luke to catch up, and that may be his intentions. He's trying to keep his emotions in. I've got four aces! He's shouting on the inside. He's just praying that uh, Patton can make something. <laughs> Look, my <laughs> two pair. Deal him quick. Check. And uh, Shreveman is playing this very well to get action. Will Luke fall for the bait? 7,000. Well, that disgusting check by Shreveman should send Trace, warning 7, bells to total. Patton. Minimum re-raise. And uh, if Luke gets hard-headed here, it's going to be a long long way down. Well, there's nothing really for him to get hard-headed about, Jesse May. He's got nine high. Uh oh no. Wow! You are correct! He's hard-headed with his creativity. He's trying to push Jeff Schreiman off of four of a kind. Not gonna happen. <laughs> to 30, 37 total. <laughs> this is... This is like the Tower of Babel about to, to spill Marty, over. do you want to come and clarify this, love? Now, Jeff Schreiman should maintain okay. his composure and just flat call here, obviously. Then he said raise again. I said with 30. Now, are you going to take 37, or does he have to make it 40? Schreiman, as we get a close look at him, obviously trying to contain his excitement. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit of a question here about exactly yeah. how much the raise is. How much do you have after that? The tournament director has sorted it out. Shreveman will make a decision. And he might think that Luke Patton is too wired in here to fold anything. Little does he know that Patton has no hand at all. Although he'll know the best Patton can have is two pair. Yeah, okay, you have to put the first Or maybe a straight even. And it's 30,000 on top. That's okay. Okay. And Patton's chips melting away in this hand like chocolate on a summer day. This is ugly. Yeah, if you wish to stay on uh, the still talking about it. Uh, I imagine his best play, if he knew what was out there, would be to call and try and get uh, Luke to go all in on the river. That's exactly right, uh, Jesse May. And he is really pulling out the acting job here. Cool. Wow, he's playing. He it. does exactly that. Flat calls as we go to the river. Does Luke realize how much trouble he's in? He's got to at this point. This Nothing pot can come to help him. A hundred thousand even now. Twenty-five thousand. <laughs> Luke is just trying to work out <laughs> yeah. how bad this is. It's really bad. It is really, really, really bad. That is half his chips done in disgust. And someone who worked so hard, Kenna, to get back in this match. Right. And he had all those big hands. He only picked up small pots and now bluffs more than that off here in one hand. You can understand what he was thinking, but uh, sometimes you can play a fine line where they're either a genius or a goat. Jeff Schriebman looking like the cousin, the long lost cousin of Huckleberry Seed. And, and uh, the way he played those four aces reminds me of Johnny Chan against Eric Seidel. Check, check, check. Right, check, 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 check. You know, kind of like that scene out of Rounders, very exciting. You know, it is a two horse race right now between Schriebman and Lawrence Bonet, who's got almost a quarter of a million of the 600,000 in play. Luke Patton, is he ready to blow his top? Does he have gas left in the gun? What's he going to do? That is the question. What are Patton and Plant going to do? The two P's. Who knows, but it looks like they're holding on for dear life. Watch the two P's now. P -p 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 Poker. Five and ten thousand blinds getting bigger. And uh, first action will be on Jeff Schriebman. 
15,000 now before the cards are dealt. This is make or break level, isn't Pass. it? Well, it, it's certainly going to turn the heat up on the short stack. One of those Thanks is Luke know. Patton, but he's been picking up some hands at some opportune times. Here he finds ace queen action over to Lawrence Bonet oh. in the small blind. Cool. Well, Bonet has, out, has announced call, yes. and, uh, you know, this is kind of a loose call for the way he's been MOing so far, Kendall, but he's got the chips to do it, doesn't he? Well, what do you think, uh, Jesse? May you call in that spot with that particular hand? Oh. <laughs> no fair if you look <laughs> at the flop first, as Jesse May did. 10-5-5, five, five, Bonet with top pair. I mean, Lawrence doesn't have the flashiest game in the world, but he has not given up the chip lead since he's got it. And, uh, you know, I guess he feels like he's going to get paid if he makes his hand. And uh, only Luke Patton will tell us the answer to that. 50. Well, you know, another interesting fact, I'd like to see our stats one more time of how many hands yeah, Bonet has two. lost. I don't think it's been very many. 34. And I'm miles behind. Miles behind, says Luke Patton. Wow, he seems to know what the story is. He's right here. Uh, Ace Queen beats a lot of holdings right now, Kenna, but not the one that Bonet has. That's right. He knows he's losing to any pair. Uh, if Bonet was holding a pair before the flop, Ace King. He's very frustrated. You can see, you know, he's had the hands tonight to well, make something happen, but it just hasn't gone his way. I mean, the fact is, looking at those percentages we cool. just saw, is that cool. Patton actually cool. priced in. Yeah, he's he's getting more than three to one on the pot, and he is only a three to one dog here to catch one of his cards. So he might have felt like it was mandatory. Yes, but you want to call with reason, out of reason, not out of frustration. And uh, that's exactly what happened with Patton. As we go to the turn, he's going to need an ace or a queen, or he will be on his way home, or, or two cards to a running straight. Yeah, he's put on his overcoat and buttoned his galoshes, and unless it comes, bullet or lady, Patton is done, done, done. Yep. Should he stay or should he go, the river says? Close, but no cigar. The general has been fired out of this one. And uh, Luke, long walk to fourth. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I picked up quite a few good hands, but um, not really at the right time. Um, when I went out, I knew he had a pair, but I started fell in love with my hand, and I didn't have very much more to play with, so I just thought I'd go for trying and outdraw him. Down to three players now, we've lost internet qualifier Luke Patton. Lawrence Bonet looking comfortable with a big stack, but this is poker and you can never count your chickens. As the cards come out of the shuffle machine, pitched across the felt to find Lawrence Bonet with the 10-7 of diamonds. This is the kind of hand on the button, Ken, that Raise. could signal Raise. Larry's intentions. Does he mean <coughs> to sit back or press? And press looks like the move, is it, is it correct? Pass, Absolutely, pass. you have to be able to switch gears in this game in order to stay ahead of the blinds, and Lawrence okay. Bonet did it right there. Now that it's pot okay may have seemed to be nothing about it, but it spoke volumes in how Lawrence Bonet can switch gears and change up his game to bring you know, no, three-handed play into uh, his arsenal. Well, flatly, he'd never have raised that off. hand on the button no, early no, on no, in this no, match, no. would you? <laughs> That's right. No, that you know, you have to be able to change gears. Right. You have to be able to put the foot on the gas. And Bonet looking like he has a Ferrari in the garage and has brought it out. Action to Schreibman in the small blind. Looking at the eight oh, five of clubs, this is one of my favorite hands, Jesse May. Why, I can't tell you, All I right. just have an affinity Race. for it. And this usually is what happens. <laughs> Lawrence has sensed weakness here and uh, he is just turning up the screws. It's on here. Pass. Another great play by Lawrence Benet. I can't time. say enough. You have to know your hand value shorthanded. He does. He knows the value of an ace. <laughs> I mean, he's Heads done. up and... Uh, <laughs> he's done everything but take a bazooka and lay it flat on the table. Uh, 
I think sure, Lawrence man. Boa has raised every time it's got to him since this level started. And, uh, but he's raised with proper values. That's the thing. He's not out there, Robin, except for that 10-7 on the button, which was a gear change. Don't you agree? I think he's become a wild and loose maniac. I think he's become a raving lunatic. I think he's become the fastest flyer on the table. Oh, I disagree with you. I think he's playing his cards shrewdly, balancing the conservative image with the inner tiger. Raise from Shreveman on the button, called by Plant the Big Blind, and uh, he's checked dark here. Am I allowed to do that? What is that about? Weakness. Okay, Harold's checked. Over okay. to yourself, and that's a check. Both checked. Shreveman's read it KG, and the king would make a straight, but uh, that's enough. Well, 10 jack. Now, the pair finally to check. Shreveman. Check, both checked. Plant looking for a nine for the straight in the gut. Another ace on the river. Will Plant give it up, or will he make an inadvised bluff? 15,000. 15,000. That is ill-advised because I will tell you, within eight seconds, I am sure he's going to be called by Jeff Schreiber. Hmm. Yeah, he looked to be playing this way to try and induce. Four, three, two, one. Okay, it's longer than eight seconds. Twelve seconds. Yeah, Jeff has been playing pillow catcher here. <laughs> no, you, you win. <laughs> Extra no, drama win. in the call. Kiss those chips goodbye, nice but instead nice. he can say hi to the pot. I nearly, I nearly, I should have made it 20. Forgot the answer to 10. No, you shouldn't have, uh, Howard. I think you would have lost 8,000 more had you made it 20. Schreibman, much too shrewd to be buffaloed out of that pot, especially with the ace pairing on the river, making it less likely that his opponent held an ace. I'll be saying nice things about you as well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm all in. All in. Mm -hmm. Thirty-nine total. Howard's moved in. Thirty-nine total. And uh, you know what? I like mm -hmm. this, Kenna. He has convinced these guys that he's only willing to move with big hands, but the nine-three suited, taking yes. the money the there. I've seen in about Twenty minutes. It was <laughs> and once again, reverse again, disgust. Well, did he move in dark? Did he? I oh, never he saw him actually look at his cards. Oh, it's perfect it's timing. That's why I got all the chips. <laughs> I'm a danger. I think he must have because he hasn't shown. Uh, <laughs> He's a wily coyote, is Howard Plant. Fifty-four thousand, and he can't buy a hole in the head. No, he doesn't feel like he has much hope. But you can see the fortunes can turn very quickly in no limit hold'em. Two double ups, and he would vault himself into second place. So don't give up on the plan. Between that, Bonet and Shreveman have been picture perfect. I don't think I've seen it. Uh, there's one thing about Shreveman and Bonet, Kenna, is that they've both found a way to increase their stack without really jeopardizing doubling up Howard Plant, which Price, is the one thing they don't want 000. to do. Right. They've whittled them, haven't they? You don't want to jeopardize mm. a large portion of your stack while increasing it, if at all possible. And they've accomplished that feat, and now Plant in a very bad position here. Schreibman, should he elect to call, will have him oh, damn nutty. Me. Yeah, I mean, he'd be very unlucky to find out that he's dominated here. He'd want to think his cards are live at least. But, um... Fair, I, I wouldn't blame him for calling, but uh, he's going to make up his own mind about what to do. It, it will be a bad call considering the cards oh. out there. He could be playing stop and go? He very well could, which means call the bet no matter what flops, move it in. Looks like he's still got 30,000 there, enough to make his opponent consider. He's flopped a gut shot straight. You're not going to get any better than that. All in. Quickly called by Shreveman. They both have a double. They both have a gutter. Watch yeah, Shreveman was he, he was committed to this pot as well, no matter what it looks like, Kenna. Wow. And uh, the king high, plenty good. Plant 
guess he's drawing dead to a eight or nine it's right now. Good. Eight or nine. It's not looking good at all. And that's what Shryman so says, eight or nine. So what is it? Clean the game over. Shryman's saying, so don't weird. walk too fast. I've seen this plenty of times. But Howard down to a river in a prayer. Looking for an eight or nine is Howard oh, Plant. Right. The best cards I've seen Otherwise, he will be planted in the lounge. Oh, yeah. oh. Wow. So it it is a nine, back. and he sits <laughs> down and doubles up. A courteous so, uh, shake of the hand by level. Jeff Schreiman. The new blinds are going to be seven and fifteen thousand. How much the power shifting? Is. Howard up. says, "Hey, I thought you were my friend. I win a pot, you raise the blinds, but uh, he's gifted his seat back in touch." You've got to love Howard Plant just for his confidence in wearing a shirt like that. He loves to chat and tell the table stories, but you can bet your life he's sussing out the play and picking up tells all the while. I wouldn't discount him out of this one whilst he still has chips in his hand. As the blinds go up and they get so high, the luck factor goes up because you're forced to play no matter what you have. The lower the blinds, the more skill factor involved. Mm. Okay, I'll call. Cool. Shreeman throwing a curveball in here, limping in with the ace, Kenna. And Bonet not falling. <coughs> so give me a flop. Dangerous play by Jeff Shreeman. Yeah, the last time he tried to do something fancy like this, Bonet ate him up. But uh, that's a nice little Check flop. Spades. Middle pair. Well, see, this is the problem with slow does. playing. He's not going to get cool. any additional cool. action. Well, <laughs> I guess I'm wrong. Wow. Wow. Called with five high? Well, you know it? what? I think this is a post oak bluff being done by Bonet. That means you're calling with no hand to set up your opponent, right. but this is bad timing. Yeah, because. Shreeman nice. caught the one card on the turn that could get Bonet in trouble. It was a well-weighted bluff, but not no more. Can Shreeman fold three eights? I don't know. I mean, we have not seen this play. <laughs> I tell you what. Ty Bonet, he is showing us a different level. What did you say, sorry? 90, 90, 90. Total. Raised. 60, oh total. He has gone to Hialeah and back again to find this move. Five high, 90,000, and he's got Shreedman thinking. He's molded, he yeah. molded three eights. Wow. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> can we say it enough? Deceiving. How about Lawrence Bonet? He says, take that world poker tour. <laughs> Rip his shirt open and call him Superman. Where has that been hiding? Immortality, a word not often used lightly. <laughs> but can a after we are bleached bones, they might refer to this hand as the bluff. The day Bonet took a 26-year-old off three-eighths with five high. <laughs> wow, exciting three-way action. The post-oak bluff played to perfection by Lawrence Bonet. He represented a slow play on a flush, and then even though Jeff caught three eights on the turn he was able to get it use his image to get him to lay it down incredible really and the other incredible story uh jesse is howard plant howard plant of course he was he hung around he was short stacked he looked dead he looked eliminated but mm. now well in second and a double up now wow. uh he could end up chip leader going into the head up. and remember he was down to like twenty thousand from the cellar to the attic he is on the rise he's like that boogeyman one step at a time he's coming closer and closer and closer will he get there is schreiber fried we'll find out three but they can't hang on for long it'll be too soon schreiber just cursing himself you know 
At the very least, he had a redraw to a full house. But that shows you the image that you put in people's <laughs> mind, how strong it is and how it can Pass. come into play. Hand <laughs> after hand. <laughs> but they never got out of line. It, um, after three or four hours, you'd think I might realize that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now Benet <laughs> giddy with excitement, <laughs> cannot contain it. <laughs> oh, wow. Large. Wow. I'm <laughs> expecting the tie to be loosened, the shirt Pressure collar to come open, and a hairy chest to come out sure from that. Lawrence Benet <laughs> after that pot. As we go to the leaderboard, Jesse. Lawrence Bonet felt himself slipping away, and he uncorked the play of the tournament, KJ, to re-establish dominance. 364,000, he's earned every penny. For me to win this, um, it would be fantastic. Uh, the, the money would be nice. The fact that uh, being able to travel to London and win a televised tournament, um, I'm sure that uh, Part of the money would be put aside to enter other buy-ins in, on the tournament circuit to uh, try to advance my game. 364,000 of the 600,000 in play sit in front of Lawrence Bonet. When you consider those nice stacks that Bonet has, I mean, it's also worth thinking, Ken, how many hands he's turned over. Very few, I think. Cool. These guys don't oh. really have a, much of a line on his play, do they? But uh, Plants yeah, limped yeah. in here with the king, queen of diamonds. He was trying to set the trap. Has he done this one time too many? That a very nice flop for Plant. Two yeah, over cards, yeah. the flush draw. Shreveman not buying it. I think Shreveman is hip to the slow play yeah, of Mr. Plant. I think you're right. And uh, Howard could turn a winner into a disaster here if the river comes wrong. But it's come right okay. for him. It's come very right. Wow, okay, and he it. does finally yeah. elicit okay. a bet. How much? I mean, it had to come perfect for Howard to trap Shreveman here. And it well, may it sure have. did. You know, well, you know, I think Shreveman just sensed on, that, uh, that, you know, that Howard was slow playing there, but he just couldn't take three checks in a row. Aggressive players rarely can. And that third check well, he was, was enough for value for, there, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, I mean, Howard Plant very nicely played here and just a fake before yeah. Can I? Can I? Oh, nodding like I knew it. Give me two and, uh, I think he did. It's a, he did. It, it was. It was. <laughs> it's really kind of a cold deck card on the end. Although if it had come with three or eight of diamonds, it would have been the exact same situation. And Plant, who tried so yeah, hard to trap Kenna, finally <laughs> sprung <laughs> one <laughs> when he wanted. Yep. That time the trap worked for Howard Plant. That was going in on the. He doubles sure. up. And is back and a factor in this match. He takes over second place and moves up to 122,000. And after being down in the cellar with like 20 something thousand, he's got to feel like he's got a million in front of him. <laughs> well, here we are. Still three left. Nobody wants to go home. Everybody fighting Pass. for that one and only seat into the semifinal. Who will it be? Lawrence Bonet. He's had the fortune of good cards, great plays. Cool. And that is... Will it be Howard Plant, who's come back from the cellar? <laughs> Very uncharacteristic move for Bonet, limping into Howard Plant's blind. I think since this heat started, he's only been pumper dump. And it uh, looks like Howard is trying to figure out what the story is as well. But it's Bonet with middle pair here. And aggression. 30. 30,000. What is the story there? Why would <laughs> Bonet choose to limp Pass. in after years and years of relentless pursuit? Well, I think I, I disagree, Jesse. I think he's uh, shown a balance to his play, sometimes limping, sometimes raising. Oh, you know, and this. here, realistically, he, he realizes he has 10 high. 
And uh, Howard Plant saying, why don't you just check? Because he has a pair. He's trying to protect his hand. He's playing great. Ah, ah, point taken. He is playing just great, isn't he? He really is. I, I mean, I get my... I, I have not had the pleasure of playing with him, nor do here. I want it after watching him attack this table oh, no. tonight. Still here. But, but it certainly has been a pleasure pass. watching him play. Oh. Well, the first oak post oh. bluff in the in the history of our short time together. Can I, I haven't seen an oak post bluff since oak was a post. <laughs> <laughs> the oak post bluff, or the post right, oak bluff, four. rather. Right, I'll explain to you I in a moment. Uh, right now, we have Jeff Schreibman moving <laughs> all in, 80, uh, almost 100,000 now. One thing you can guarantee is that Howard Plant has had no love with Jack-10 offsuit during his career. He has, yes. he has played it weak uh, approximately seven times tonight. And I, I, yeah. I guarantee you what, he is not a man who is willing to go broke with Jack-10 offsuit. No, he, he's certainly not. He's been dealt this hand, as you said, a number of times. I mean, elected never to play it I mean, and he won't play it here he must have uh, lost a lot of money with that hand i guarantee you he has he does not like it he read a book that said jack 10 is toilet paper and it belongs in the toilet because he has an aversion to that hand he might be right i don't know looking at the leaderboard it uh all of a sudden is plant below Shreveman, but the story right now, Bonet just closing in. Well, Bonet, he's got most of the pie, as you see, looking for the Ala mode, which could be either Shreveman or Plant. Who's it gonna be? Well, I'll tell you what, by the time they decide, they may just say, wow, second, wonderful, thanks. Well, remember, Jesse May, second gets absolutely nothing. Zero, zilch, nada. Winner take all the golden ticket to the semifinals. Oh. Hey, the way Howard Plant acted when he saw that hand, it would have just been Pass. pure poetry oh. if it was aces. But <laughs> a limp in here, 30,000 in there. And Shreveman having the exact same hand that Howard just folded. Yeah, nice. Deuce three. Just all the deuces seem to be on board here. There's one deuce left in the deck. And Shreveman. Oh, wow. No deuce or any pair is unlikely to win this hand as much as it is, you know, position. Check. And whoever bets will probably take this Check. pot down. Whoever bets first. Kind of like that game of chicken, right? Whoever blinks first wins. That's what it Check. looks like from here. But Shreveman must be cow tied Check. right now when it comes to betting into Bonet. That's right. Neither player wanting to pick up this pot. They're both playing the board right now, Kenna. It'll be a split pot if they both check. Oh, look at look at Schreiber. No, he looked at the board like, can I make a bet? I can't do it. Check. Okay. <laughs> when you win, when you queen eye. Are they having the same thing? Schreiber says. I have the oh. same hand as him. Split pot. I do sweet. I would have Hi, Kate. What did you say? What was the deal? I want to worry about sticking on my money. <sighs> Shreveman shaking his head a little bit, saying, "You gotta have heart pounding his chest." Knows that fifteen thousand. He nearly won it by a vet in there. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I I think this guy's a good regrouper, Shreveman. He, he looked very frazzled yeah. a couple rounds ago, Kenna, but just got right back on that horse and. uh is riding Howard uh, talking to the cameraman saying uh, my shirt look fat make me look fat <laughs> I don't know or he's pleading to us for help and we can't give he's him cool. any cool. Bonet's picked up the pocket bullets here and has limped in here if plant goes all in it'll be the last move he ever does but Howard too wise to fall for that and um, well, we, say, we see Benet mixing it up wonderfully. He raised with the aces last time and picked up the blinds. This time he elects the flat call. Can he check again here and get action? No. You win. You win. Okay. 
<laughs> when I was saying, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little hard of hearing. Did you say I raise? <laughs> I'm a mind reader. I, w I was going to raise. Don't tell him that. I asked him his secret blow. <laughs> Just, okay. Making it easier for her. Howard Plant stopping, stealing the thunder from uh, Lawrence Benet, giving, you know, stealing his pleasure of betting and not even giving him that option. Man, Marty says, please wait till the man bets before you fold. It was actually a great move. I mean, the fold out of turns, DC, head up, is never a strong play unless the other guy holds the nuts. Race. Howard Plant, very good. <laughs> judiciously bringing that move into action. Lawrence Ray Benet, <laughs> quickly the next what hand says raise, and, he, and Howard says again. Oh, wow, Howard's got the ladies. And uh, I do believe we're going to see oh. Howard Plant with a great spot to oh, double up pass. here. He's mm -hmm. moved all in. Bonet will call, and Howard will be leading. Well, now do you see how Howard really planted those chips into the pot? To me, that's one tell I look for. When someone forcefully presses their chips down into the pot, that Olay. that just smells of strength cool. to me. Oops. Howard quick. just called here before the flop. I'm sorry, I thought he moved all in, Kenna, but he has uh, he has moved all in. Benet has called him on the flop of 10 high. This is the first hand that Benet has been in trouble since the two kings against the two aces in the first hand of the tournament. Yeah, right, you are. This is a good situation for Howard to double up here. Anything but a tenor ace, and he's looking at 169,000, which would be his peak chip count, but he doesn't want to see the bogeys. Three on the turn. He just has to avoid an ace or a ten. And that patience will pay off, and he will double up. Here's the river. Hold him, says Howard. And this game wide open, four hearts, okay. immaterial on wow. this board. Plants played that pretty well. He waited, he waited, he sprung, he hit. And, 10, and, 20, and uh, that is, day, like, as you say, Ken, the first chunk to come out of Bonet's armor since the start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three ways, but with blinds going up, it can't go on for too long, can it? Well, you never know. Howard Plant just hanging around, hanging around like an abscess tooth. You know, every deck needs a joker to invigorate the, an the action. The joker tonight, Howard Plant, he is the wild card creeping towards the top. Can he get there? Like this is a lot like the As hotel. the blinds go to 10 and 20,000. Okay, interesting to see how Lawrence Bonet reacts to his slight setback after doubling plant up. And also, if Howard changes Pass. his game plan now that he's got <clears throat> chips to play with. Good points, Jesse May. But the short stack may drive this action, Kenna. I, I expect he, he is on the short stack. An all in move Anyone? here. Very appropriate with suited connectors, and that's exactly what he does. Oh but look my. at that's this, uh, Lawrence Benet. Yeah, this is pretty unlucky for Shreveman. Uh, oh, he was well entitled, Ken, <laughs> I, I imagine, to try and pick up that 30,000 out there. Have you ever seen oh. El and, uh, on, before you turn him aces, over? Have you ever seen uh, Elvis? Just one of those hands he is in he terrible is shape against. Four or five of clubs. Uh, uh, race as well, you know, bear. Wow. I mean, I, 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 you know, you, you feel like Shriveman would have gotten Bonet to fold a lot of hands and he right. wouldn't have been in terrible shape against some others, but against the two aces, no. it's okay, guys, pretty much a long oh, walk wow. back to West Virginia. And, uh, I'm, well, that's the aces cracker. Well, you, can't you know, if the pain of running so into aces isn't enough, how about Howard Plant stopping? Uh, you know, uh, Lawrence Bonet from turning over his hand right away so he could tell his Elvis story. It it further now. inflicting pain <laughs> in this shy Shriveman oh, yeah, who just really wants to be done with it at this point. Well, Shriveman had a 22% chance before the flop. Now he's looking at a seven for glory here. But it cannot be a heart as Bonet holds the ace of hearts and all, oh no, I'm sorry, it's an eight of diamonds. I thought it was three hearts. So any seven will make him the straight. Yeah, no seven of hearts would give Bonet a redraw. But Can he pull the lucky seven? 
Oh. An extra out. Got a few outs now. Any four, any five, any seven now. Shreveman nodding like he expects it. Will the deck deliver? A tense moment as we go to the river. Oh, Board's paired, but the wrong way. Ace is up. Enjoy playing with you. Play well, dead man's hand. Okay. It means the okay. end of Shreveman, oh. who uh, he's been a no, he's no. been a revelation <laughs> tonight. He's played good. Uh, no, I have we have something he's different going to be on mind. the scene for a while, Kevin. Okay, no Lawrence, you've been blind last uh, time. Which is, uh, so which is a shocking blind. development for Jeff Schreeman out in third, and Howard Plant still being there in second, fighting for the title. Yeah, we're head up now. The game goes on. Oh, yes. We're down to the last two, but just one spot is up for grabs in the semi-final, and our runner-up tonight goes home with nothing. We'll find out who gets in the money after the break. Just two left, and it seems like a mountain to climb for Howard Plant. How do Jesse and Kenna see this going? Well, in a game so much dictated by big pairs, Kenna James, perhaps appropriate that Jeff Schriebman fell prey to one. Absolutely. I mean, all night long, the big pairs flying out of the deck and a lot of them hitting Lawrence Benet time and time again. You know, he, he took one misstep, lost one hand, and right away, bam, picks up the rockets and eliminates Jeff Schriebman. Okay, the head up now. Mm -hmm. uh, Howard Plant at a three to one disadvantage. Right. What factors are gonna determine who wins this? Well, you know, at this point, Howard has got to step up his game. He's played a very conservative game to this point, and it served him well. But that patience and discipline will be his end if he doesn't switch gears and put Lawrence Bonet to the test. Second place gets nothing, must move to groove. Let's see this head up battle commence. Doesn't Lawrence Benet look like the country doctor? <laughs> he absolutely does. I mean, seriously. <laughs> it is the greatest bluff that he's run tonight. His appearance is well deceiving. The heart of a lion beats inside. The ironic <sighs> difference of approach. If you saw him in the grocery store, you would never guess that this man is one shrewd poker player. But here he is, heads up for the title, trying to get that seat into our semifinal. He would be a worthy representative, I tell cool. you. Cool. Yeah, Lawrence Bonet out of the same mold yeah. as Barry Johnson. All right. They used to call numbers from Texas and Plant 45, now. 45 now. Two big face cards here. Says, uh, let's make it more. Well, and look at the timing of Bonet. Now he does just limp in, faces a raise, and his timing is perfect. He'll get away from this hand losing the minimum. It is, like sixth sense, like second sight. He is really dialed in here. I don't uh, anticipate him, you know, putting another chip in this pot. second here. Mm -hmm. Any chance he might want to call and see if he can wipe Howard out with a Absolutely not. Drop? The deck is hitting cool. him in cool. the face. Why does he want to step out with this mediocre hand? I have no idea, but he has surprised me at every turn and here once again. You know, Ken, it, it may be that Lawrence is over eager to get this one over with. Eagerness does not look like a trait that is oozing out of him, but you may be right, Jesse May. Let's go to the flop. And, uh, Howard. Not a terrible flop for Bonet. He's got a straight draw. Is Howard gonna push? or knuckle. Tough to push with no pair after you've been called with your pre-flop raise. You're right, and he does have the gutter ball straight. Check. A seven or I a checked. jack would give him the best hand. The turn card. That is not what Check. Howard Plant hoped to see. If Bonet can find a big bet, Check. he can take I the checked. pot. Seven, eight, or jack. King high, good right now. Check. And you can see all of a sudden Plant may be realizing that King High is good here. I think Plant, I think Bonet rather, 
has waited too long to bluff and should give this check. pot up. I want to know what would have happened wins, if Bonet had set him in, but King um, High, good this. enough. And uh, that's pretty much a gift from the graveyard. Didn't realize what Kachepa was in. That's <laughs> exactly right. You've called it perfectly, Jesse Main. Lawrence Bonet not giving up many chips, but certainly did in that pot. Two hundred thousand is yeah, very playable like right now for it. Hojo. Yeah. So you had them on the ice king. So the win. Yeah. How much was it? I mean, blinds um, are fifteen and thirty thousand now, Kenna. But uh, one thing I just noticed: uh, I like Lawrence Bonet has folded two. Board. Consecutive hands from his button for the first time since head up play started, and you think it's more a question of his holdings than his strategy? No, no, that's, I think that's the normal oh, rate, the, the but we got it for. I'd like to see I what so. the You're going to win this one. Pass. I even I can't All of a line. sudden, the play has gone very one. friendly. What did he say about Kenna James? I can't hear him. We're way up in the booth. I think he. Uh, if yeah, they want to play I'll with their hands face it up. It just um, opened when I'd, I'd already booked. <laughs> Good luck to them. And it just opened. So I went there. I was impressed with downstairs. It's beautiful, but yeah, I never got a chance. So did, did you go and see the shows? Uh, Reeve, not at the win. Didn't see, any, the Olo, didn't the see anything there. Uh, so the... Uh, Perhaps oh. Howard oh. Plant oh. Oh, no, taking the uh, focus away from the uh, poker so action and getting uh, oh, he definitely Lawrence Benet. <laughs> there is no Tell me what question about it. Getting his mind off the game. You think that, oh, that this, this is a question that Howard Plant smells a, one open a possible Eagles. victory. He thinks all I have to do is keep Larry B. Cool. Cool. A little Anyways. hip hip. And uh, yeah, finally, I yeah. will be back in this one between 200 and 300. Yeah, it's only a few sniffs and a handshake. And Howard out for blood now. He's just flopped three sixes. And he's been allowed to do it with a six deuce in the big blind. Kenna, something is afoot. Well, what is afoot is the very shrewd plan of Howard Plant. He may have done that. Oh, no. If Bonet tries to do a Bonet on Plante, it'll be goodbye. Saranari. <laughs> Howard may check it here. He may trap check. Does he think Lawrence is drawing dead, Kenna, or on a draw? The real story of this hand, as far as I'm concerned, Jesse May, as Howard Plant slides 100,000 into the pot, was his distraction of to Lawrence Benet, getting his mind off the game. Lawrence Benet might have raised before the flop. Instead, he distracted him into flat calling, and in lieu of that, flopped three sixes and took this pot away. I think you're right. Howard Plant does not have the chip lead, but the momentum solidly on his side of the table as he eases his bulk behind the stack. Stacks, clacks, and this man out for blood. Well, I don't anticipate that the discussions oh, and the talks will be quite as friendly now. Call. A little limp in here from Lawrence. Call announced. Is that enough? Lawrence. Howard needs money. Okay. Check. Well, Benet's nice. strategy, pretty apparent to me. He's going to limp with queen high or less. He's going to raise with king high or ace high or any pair. Oh no, they've both hit. Okay. Top pair, middle pair, oh. all over. It very well could be Jesse May. 60,000. 60,000. 85,000 total. All in. Plant says, I don't think you have the queen, and if you do, I've got five outs. That's the story, KJ. Well, to me, it looks like this 
obviously is an easy call. Just a few more chips for Benet. He thinks he's behind, but he's actually in front. And barring any unlucky card on the turn or the river, and he will plant Howard Plant. A four to one no, favorite clean. right now with two cards to come okay. is Lawrence Bonet. He ah. has played super fine, as has Howard Plant. Give him credit, but uh, down to a jack or an eight. Or it is too late for the magician. Well, they do call him the magician. He's going to need some magic on the turn. Here it is. A nine. Yeah, nine is going to work. Nine, eight. Nine, eight. Jack. jack. Key cards. Can he do it? There's to the river we go. And that was close. You did play well. And I'll tell you what, these two players fortunate. have a lot of respect for each other because they have outplayed a very tough table. But the man standing at the end, not the magician, but Lawrence Bonet, whose name we may be saying in cheers and whispers for years to come. Lawrence Bonet gets the semi-final seat. Both him and our runner-up Howard Plant are with Jesse and Kenna. Was that good poker or what? Lawrence, congratulations. Wow. I mean, Thank you, sir. where does it come from? I could play poker 100 years and never come up with the courage you showed today. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Jesse. He wrote down here, how long have you been playing poker? One year. <laughs> now, that has got to be a bluff. Tell me, how do you get that good playing in one year? Actually, I, I played in college, uh -huh. um, which was in the 70s and played Texas Hold'em back then after seeing Amarillo Slim on the, wow. on the Tonight yeah, Show, yeah. Johnny yeah, Carson. Yeah, yeah. We added that to our repertoire. But then after college, which I left school in 78, I've not played a hand until about a year ago this month. Isn't that something? You yeah. called it, Jesse. May, maybe a natural talent <laughs> hiding from Lion years. Dorman. Some of those Lion bluffs, Dorman. the 4-5 uh, offsuit, taking out Jeff Schriebman, and uh, I mean, just great stuff. Howard, uh, commiserations, though. I mean, you hung in there. Tremendous heart today. But uh, was the cards just get you at the end? The cards got me all night. I don't think I had a hand. I probably had a couple of hands. I, mm -hmm. It was unbelievable. The guy kept raising every time I flat called. I knew he was making moves. I couldn't do anything about it. I just didn't have the hand to do it. The final hand, I should have gone all in. That was my mistake. I nearly went all in. I left it. I let him hit a catch a queen, and I was demised. It was typical. I'm always the bridesmaid, never the bride. <laughs> well, semifinals to come for you, Lawrence. There's no telling how far he can take. It'll be fun to watch. But next week, Roland DeWolf, Tony Bloom, and the incomparable Mark Goodwin. See you next time on the thepartypoker.net World Open.